High up in the hills, on the border of the Judean desert, lies Hebron, the ancient town of the Bible. Hebron figures prominently in the stories of the Hebrew patriarchs. It was the object of one of Joshua's great conquests, and it was the place where David first established his kingdom. Hebron is sacred in both Jewish and Muslim tradition. Abraham, the first patriarch, was the father both of Ishmael, the forefather of the Arabs, and of Isaac, the forefather of the Jews. In Hebron, the roots of Israel and Islam meet and intertwine. Hebron is in the heart of Judea, 25 miles south of Jerusalem and about 35 miles north of Beersheba. The focal point of Hebron, its spiritual heart, is this massive structure, the tomb of the patriarchs, built by King Herod in the year 25 BCE. Standing above the caves where the patriarchs are believed to be buried, it's the only complete example of Herodian architecture still standing anywhere in Israel. The Jews call it the Cave of Machpala, referring to the field and cave purchased by Abraham from the Hittites 4,000 years ago as a burial place for his wife Sarah, for himself and for his descendants. Two millennia later, the Muslims, claiming Abraham as a prophet, established a mosque over the site and called it the Mosque of Abraham. Other peoples and cultures have left their mark on this building, but throughout history and despite the passage of time, it has remained a major religious site for Jews and Muslims. Today, it's the only shrine in the world within whose walls one finds both a synagogue and a mosque. Fifty thousand people live in Hebron, and most of them are Muslim Arabs. The Arabic name of the town is El Khalil. It means the friend, and it refers to the friend of God, the patriarch Abraham. On a hill directly opposite Hebron is Kiryat Alba, with 4,000 residents, an Israeli suburb built up since 1967. Kiryat Alba is one of Hebron's original names and is mentioned in Genesis. Noam Anon has been living in Kiryat Alba for 12 years. Today he's the director of the local field school, teaching geography and Jewish history, as well as leading treks around the countryside. For him, living close by Hebron is a direct link to his own past. I think the meaning of this place for every Jew that comes here, he feels like that he comes to his personal roots, not to, not to just an historical place, but to our patriarchs, to our, our roots, our family. A Jewish community existed in Hebron for centuries. They lived in a densely populated Jewish quarter. The origins of the community go back to the 6th century BCE, when Jews returning from exile in Babylon were known to have settled in the town. Walid Muhammad Ali Jabari was born in Hebron 60 years ago to a distinguished Arab family whose links in the town go back nine centuries. He recalls the Jewish community in Hebron. Before 1929, there were a number of Jewish families living in Hebron. These families had good relations with the inhabitants of the city. They shared with the Muslims in their joys and sorrows, and the Muslims did the same. In 1929, murderous rioting by an Arab mob broke out in Hebron against the centuries-old Jewish community. More than 60 Jews were slain, and the rest of the community evacuated. The Jewish connection with Hebron was temporarily severed. 
It was only in the wake of the Six-Day War that the Jews were able to re-establish their presence in the town, and for the first time in the tomb of the Patriarchs itself. Because for centuries, under Muslim rule, the Jews were not permitted to pray within the tomb, but were restricted to praying outside the building at what became known as the Seventh Step. In this point was the Seventh uh, Step. Here were steps until the year 1970. The steps to go into the building were here. And at this point was the seventh one. From the Muslim occupation, the Jews were not allowed to come and to go into the building, only to stand here on the seventh step. The Arabs of the town regard the Mosque of Abraham as their property. They recognize no Jewish rights to the site and deeply resent the establishment of a synagogue in what they consider an exclusive Muslim shrine. Bohan Kamil Jabari is a member of the local religious council and a custodian of the mosque. A mosque for us, any mosque, is a holy place and its purpose is to serve the faith. The Muslims built this mosque in the place where Abraham was buried and it's a holy place for the Muslims. In my opinion, there is no place for a mosque and a synagogue together. Miriam Levinger has been an activist for Jewish rights in Hebron since the very first days following the Six-Day War. I feel that the tomb of the patriarchs belongs uh, to the Jews. Maybe uh, the Arabs feel that uh, they have a right to uh, worship at the grave of Abraham. But in the mosque of Abraham, there are also Sarah, Isaac, Rebecca, Jacob, Leah, who are the Jewish forefathers. And I feel that I should have full rights to pray at the graves of my forefathers. Most recently, the Levingers and a number of other Jewish families have returned to live in the old Jewish quarter in the heart of Hebron. In the years between 1929 and 1967, the quarter was destroyed. Miriam Levinger dreams of restoring the quarter to a living community, as prophesied in the Bible, that which has been shall be again. For me, it's very significant to come back and uh, to feel the prophecy before my eyes coming true, to feel the renewal of the Jewish people. <laughs> Kiryat Alba. It has schools, a shopping center, medical facilities, playgrounds, and even an industrial zone. The community is made up largely of religiously observant families, but about a third are non-observant, more secular Israelis, who have made Kiryat Alba their home. Such a person is Eliakim Haetzni, by profession a lawyer. He came to Kiryat Alba for ideological reasons of his own. Came home. What is Zionism? They return to Zion. This is Zion. I was born in Germany. In Germany, they told me, go to Palestine. So I did just that. Now, uh, Hebron is uh, the very place where the Jewish history began, in the Jewish history in this country. And I always had a feeling, the minute uh, when this place was liberated, that I have to go here. And uh, I'm not uh, that young anymore. I have been in many places. For those uh, 11 years I'm here, uh, I, really, I never really felt at home like in this place. So I'm at home. These youngsters in the Talmud Torah school in Kiryat Alba are receiving a religious education based upon the teachings of the Bible. They're being taught that the Bible is not just ancient history, but a living testament relevant to our day and age. You don't think about it every morning when you wake up. But uh, you know that a Jew prays every day, a religious Jew prays every day three times, 
and he begins his, he begins his pray in the words Elohei Avraham Yitzchak Yaakov, the God of uh, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and he said it every day it's a very strong place it's a very strong thing to live here it's a very meaningful thing to be here An uneasy coexistence prevails in the tomb of the patriarchs. The Muslims may enter at will. The Jews have only limited access. During official Arab prayer times, the mosque is closed to non-Muslims, as it is all day Friday, the Muslim Sabbath. During Jewish services held twice a day and on Sabbath, no restrictions are applied to Muslim worshippers. In between these services, Jews, Arabs and tourists from all over the world come to visit the graves of the patriarchs and the building which now contains both a mosque and a synagogue. In the end, and I hope it will not be after too many more convulsions between the two nations. In the end, uh, the logic will prevail, which, which says that there are two, here two inevitable, given things which nobody is strong enough to, even if he wanted, to eliminate. First of all, the presence of the Arabs here. Uh, it's not a question how many. They are here. And the second inevitable thing is the return of the Jews. Uh, surely stronger than uh, the will or the negative will of any Arab uh, leader or political party, etc. So do, these two things are given. And now we should try to settle. In ancient Israel, the north was a center of activity. The south was more a place of the spirit a place of struggle. There is an old Jewish saying, he who wishes to become wealthy should go north, he who wishes to become wise should go south. Hebron lies in the south. Perhaps in time, Jews and Arabs will find that wisdom. <laughs>